Just had an eight and a half hour stream. Just posted a video on my thoughts for the patch notes. Check that out if you want to see my thoughts on League Starters and all that. But we're going to talk about something a little bit different right now. We're going to fast forward to Path of Exile 2. That was in the past three days ago or four days ago now um, when I went to the PUE2 event. So what you're about to watch is what I did on stream. Actually, earlier today, I sat down for an hour and I just went through it and I narrated and I talked. But I really liked my overview that I did on stream kind of live with more raw reactions. And um, yeah, I think it's the, the most fair thing that I can do for you guys where on stream, I'm a little bit less filtered. And I say, you know, really, I'm, I'm not I'm a little bit less afraid of, uh, you know, being a little extra harsh on my criticism. And I think that's the most fair thing to share here with you guys. So yeah, no editing or anything. I'll cut out, you know, any dead space or bathroom breaks or anything. But yeah, no editing, just my raw unfiltered thoughts on PoE2. As I say in the video, I do want to just give you guys the summary and my thoughts right off the bat. I am very confident that it will be a good game. I am genuinely eight out of 10 excited for it. I think it's going to be really, really fun. There's so much potential there. Um, you know, take everything with a grain of salt. The fact that we were playing a beta, it's not ready. Uh, I really love and respect that they delayed the game. I think the best thing that they can do is delay the beta, delay the release until the, uh, you know, until they're actually ready and they have a game that they're happy with. Take all that with a grain of salt. I played apparently what was the weakest class by far. Sorceress was very, very undertuned. My entire experience is through that lens. You know, also take the high level game design decisions, you know, very seriously and understand that the game design for Path of Exile 2 is incredibly different than Path of Exile 1. And I do believe that they're trying to just target, it's just a different game. Um, it is a sequel. It's a, you know, it is a sequel. You know, I, don't, I was going to say spiritual sequel, but it's a sequel, but it's something that they're not afraid of just breaking the mold. And the WASD controls the very brutal, ruthless-like experience of entire zone resetting and all that. I, I firmly believe that they're going to kind of tune it up a little bit and make it a little bit more comfortable and smoother, at least through the early acts. And we have no idea what the early, or we have no idea what the end game is going to look like. Watch all of this kind of keeping that in the back of your head that this is not a final product. Um, these game design decisions are very high level. Also, just understand that sometimes not everything is made for you. I honestly really do respect GGG for, uh, even for things that I don't really like. <laughs> um, there's certain, you know, I, I'm very down the middle here with my opinions on PoE2. I am very, very excited for it, and it feels and looks, and it's going to be such a polished, high-quality product, but you know, you just have to go into it not expecting PoE 1 gameplay. With the game design the way that it is, I don't think that it will ever play like PoE 1, and that's okay. I think, uh, you know, a very different approach that streamlined design-wise, but a little bit more intense mechanically and uh, more thoughtful and strategic in how you take fights. But anyway, that's enough of my yapping. It is 2.30 a.m. I'm just gonna slap the <laughs> slap the stream content at the end of this. Thanks for watching. Um, you know, appreciate you guys. Uh, the patch notes and all thing. I'm really excited for next week. They nerfed the ball lightning, but Frostwing got nearly a 40% damage buff. So cool. <laughs> Very cool. Working on the max roll guide uh, first thing tomorrow morning. And yeah, enjoy. PoE 2 is not made for PoE 1 players. If you are just, yeah, if you just want to, I don't think there's a chance, but I don't think PoE 2 at the end game will ever be like the insane PoE 1. I don't think it'll ever get there. If it does, I will be surprised. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a lot of fun just kind of spinning around like that with the uh, the WASD controls. It feels more like a top-down action game where every choice is supposed to be very, very intentional. Where they actually took it to the extreme and there are certain encounters. So here's the thing. Yeah, you get the, the skill gems look like this. This is the big change. The gems come with their own links, which you can use chromes and jewelers on to modify. And yeah, they already saw this in ExileCon. I also have Firebolt here, which comes from my staff. It doesn't have any gems in it. I don't know if you can get gems for your weapon skills, but yep. You actually see a DPS number right here too, which is uh, interesting. But yeah, um, the encounters in this game, like a single zone, for example, if you die, the entire zone resets. All the loot disappears. Um, the only way to get flash charges back is to go back to town. Um, I think you get them back when you die. I'm actually, I don't remember. You probably get flash charges back when you die. 
but you do not get flash charges back in any other way. There is a flash suffix that gives you them over time. I'm assuming that there's a way to get your flask back, you know, in a relatively okay way, but it's supposed to be like an Estus flask in, at least through Act 1. That's all I played. But it's supposed to be like an Estus flask in Dark Souls, where if you choose to press that flask button, that is an intentional choice to use a limited resource. Um, I did find that for me, like, I wasn't able to rebind the controls. Uh, I found that the button, it was very button intensive. And we'll see this when we get a little bit later on to the way that the skills work. But um, I, I was using the WASD controls and I had to press all the flasks. And so like there was a times like you're using WASD and it's like trying to press, you know, like five, you know, you're on WASD and you want to press like five or like one or sometimes like three can be annoying. Trying to move control and press your flasks. Um, I think you're really going to want to bind some flasks to your mouse button, maybe change them down to like, I don't know, different buttons or something because yeah, doing that was very, very intensive. Um, as you can see up here, the uh, this is the first like mini boss fight. All of the boss fights, uh, there's also like little pausing for tutorials right here. Um, before you do a boss fight, there's this checkpoint. So if you die, you can just keep redoing the boss fight, which is very nice. You don't have to rerun the zone or anything. You immediately get the checkpoint. That's actually like a nice little quality of life bonus right there. But the uh, the monster has very all bosses have very telegraphed attacks and actually like regular white mobs too. Very telegraphed attacks. You're intended to dodge roll them, not get hit. Um, all the way through the campaign, I was getting, uh, I was taking a lot of damage from every single hit. You know, I, got, I upgraded my gear the best that I could. But even by the end of Act 1, single hits were still chunking me for more than half my life. And if it persists like that through the rest of the campaign and even later on, there might just be a lot of attacks that are telegraphed from en enemies that you're not intended to ever get hit by. You might want to run, like later on, you might want to very intentionally, like if you're not using your thumb buttons already, I think that might be a, a very big uh, thing that you do. So this is town, you get an uncut skill gem. So this is also a thing that me and some of the other folks were kind of torn about. Oh, here's the thing. So there's gold. Gold is not a big deal. Gold is only for the NPC vendors. It's not the trading currency. I don't think it's tradable. Um, this puts a very harsh limit on um, on certain things that you're able to do. And uh, you know, we'll, we'll see a little bit later where you get the alternate currencies like transmute, transmutes and stuff like that. It's actually a totally different system for how you get them. We're not totally different, but it's a different interface. Um, you can see the prices of these items are very, very high. I've only done one zone, but I have 20 gold. Spoilers. I only got like 20 or 30 gold per zone for the entire act to buy a single, a single little uh, item here. It is 600 gold. I was only able to buy one flask throughout my entire, I mean, I could have bought a couple other flasks, but I, I didn't need to. I bought one flask through my entire act one playthrough. I was not able to purchase any other items, <laughs> which was, uh, these numbers are definitely tuned wrong. Um, this should be like 58 gold, not 580. The, it really feels like they put a zero at the, at the end that they shouldn't have. Um, that was just wrong, I think. That was a, a balance. And you know, a lot of this stuff can change, right? So, you know, you can't hold that. Until the game releases, you can't hold that against them. Um, so, here's a thing that we kind of found as, it's an interesting interface, but it feels like a downgrade. Um, the gems that you're able to, you get this uncut skill gem that you can then uh, cut and turn into a specific skill. In PoE 1, a really nice thing is, like, th this is the equivalent of, like, hey, I finished a quest, you, here's your three gems, pick one. But here, you get one gem, and you can choose, and that's it. And you can't go back to a vendor and say, hey, I actually wanted Flame Wall instead of Ice Nova. You make that choice, you're locked into it. It really hampered experimentation, and it really hampered, I think, one of the most fun things in PoE 1, which is like, hey, if I'm willing to press more buttons, I'm going to buy Ice Nova Spark and Flame Wall. And, you know, I can just buy them with, with Wisdom Scrolls, and I'm going to press every single button. I'm going to do everything. And they, uh, at least right now, it's railroaded. You can only buy the Sorceress Gems, and you can only get these ones right now. You get one choice. Um, so it's early development, right? 
you know, you can't hold anything against them, but that that is a current choice in the demo that I did not love whatsoever. Um, I do believe I picked Flame Wall right here. So there's also, this is a really cool thing, is when you mouse over it, there will be a a, a video that plays, there's a voice line that plays and talks about it. Basically, it just reads this out loud, um, which is kind of cool. I think I clicked on all of these, kind of, you can see there's a lot of um, not done ones. So you can see, I'm not surprised that the game is delayed. <laughs> Let's just say during the demo, there were a lot of things that weren't done yet. I don't know what the Roman numerals on the left side. Oh, no, no, the Roman numerals. So these coincide. Um, they just coincide with this, with the tier. This is all this means. I, it's not, I, I think this, this visual is kind of bad. But each skill gem has a tier that um, you can only, you can only do like that tier or, or above. Ball lightning got nerfed, uh, frost blink got buffed. So I took flame wall. The town is beautiful. Oh, the well. So this is how you re, um, re up your flasks. You have to go to town and do the well. And so, uh, people were doing boss fights and they were just opening a, opening a town portal, going back, refilling flasks, going back to the fight. Um, life and mana sustain versus your, your expenditure in in boss fights was definitely poorly tuned. Um, it was bad. It was very bad. So I, I hope it's a thing that they're rethinking. Like I went into all of the life and mana regen that I could, and it was like, you know, we're talking 0.2% a second or something. It was like, it was really bad. So I tried to type to people in global and local chat, unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, they had that disabled. I was not able to talk to people in chat. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, they, uh, it, it's totally okay. It's totally okay for things to be too hard right now and they can kind of retune them, right? I think that's fine. But, uh, Eris seemed to love them. Yeah, I mean, so, I, I, as I was just saying, like, I think if they balance it properly, it could be okay. I... I'm a very big Souls game player, and so is Eris, right? Eris has a very big history with Dark Souls. And so, like, this is why I'm saying PUE 2, if you come at it from the angle, if it just had a different name, if it was called, like, Dark Souls, the top-down action RPG, then it would, it, would make, it would make so much more sense. Like, they very clearly, like, you get Bloodborne-inspired uh, armor, your flasks work just like Estus flasks, and like the zones reset just like Dark Souls. The fights are just telegraphed like Dark Souls. It's very, very, um, you know, very clearly inspired by that. So here is the character sheet. Um, so just to quickly go over what we see here, Spirit is the new thing. It's this white bar right here. And this is actually how you reserve auras. So auras never go against your life anymore. It just goes against Spirit. And I don't recall, I didn't get any reservation auras, but you can get flat increased spirit. So my assumption is that auras actually go against, a lot of them will go against flat spirit. So you can just scale more spirit for more auras instead of like a percentage-based thing. Um, the other thing is deflect is, a, is basically just spell suppression for uh, attacks. So I, I didn't see any deflect. I didn't look on the tree that closely. Also, I can't show you guys the passive tree. The passive tree was so unfinished that they don't want, like, this is already scrubbed footage. There's no passive tree in this whatsoever. Um, the passive tree is very unfinished, and they, um, so I'm, I'm not allowed to show it to you guys, but there was nothing to look at. Like, most of it was, like, copy-pasted from PoE 1. But yeah, deflect is just spell suppression for attacks. Exact same, exact same thing. Um, so I assume it's for casters. And yeah, the, the, the character sheet looks a little bit better. Ball lightning is dead, yeah. So yeah, I moused over Deflect, and it just says exact same thing. 50% less damage from attacks instead of spells. All right. Here's the next zone. So, in terms of the playstyle here, so this is Spark. Um, this is the thing that I think they really need to figure out in Tomb, which is as you're going through zones, and you're going to see this throughout all the footage, 
as you're going through the zone. So also, yeah, that's that's the new thing. You can click right here to open a portal. There's no portal scrolls or anything. But I had to go back to town to get my uh, to get my flash charges back. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that suppression was added in PoE two, and they backported it to PoE one. That's my assumption. Um, new level up animation looks really good. So. You, ha you can see how hard these encounters are, right? I'm trying to cast my Flame Wall. Flame Wall makes you stand still. Um, you have to kill every single monster. You cannot run past the monsters. Um, oh, also, did you know in Path of Exile 2, a staff and a wand is not a weapon? Uh, I tried to equip the scepter. I don't know if it's in this footage. I tried to equip a scepter, and I wasn't able to cast a spell. Two, this is a very... We'll see how this shakes out. To cast Spark or Fireball or anything, you need to have a wand or a staff equipped. And they don't, they don't, they're not weapons. They are magical things that go on your hands. Because it said uh, you must not have a weapon equipped. So that was very interesting. That was a big change. Because um, I, I thought, I, I saw a plus spirit. Oh, maybe I can equip that and do whatever. Um, let's see. Yeah, this, this is exactly, I think this shows exactly what I was just talking about. So there's a couple monsters behind me. Now you think, oh, I'm going to turn around and attack those monsters and kind of walk backwards as I'm attacking them. Unfortunately, there's, un there's unidentified area behind me. And this is actually a zone that's notoriously difficult early on. And you see exactly what happens. So I, I, I flame all felt so bad, but it was a huge damage. Oh, it's right, it's right here. So I'm walking backwards and I'm like, okay, I'm just fighting these guys walking backwards. Four werewolves come out of the darkness. Five werewolves come out of the darkness. There is nothing that I can do. They, they ambush me. You can't roll or anything. You're just dead. They're so fast, you are just dead. And this is a thing about... It's, it's straight up Dark Souls. So like, if, think about Undyg Berg or anything in Dark Souls. Um, if you, you... You can't just... Like, you know, if you know the tricks, maybe there's a, like a place that you can go. But you can't just walk backwards into the darkness and attacking. You will just get swarmed and you will die. And uh, particularly, at least through Act 1, Sork had zero movement skills. I had zero movement abilities. Both Warrior and Ranger had movement skills. I was very jealous and unhappy about that. In Dark Souls, you can run past enemies. When you know how to, though, right? In Dark Souls, you can't run past enemies until you figure out the zone. But if you just start it, like, I'm thinking, like, think the Undead Berg, right? immediately the first thing that you do in Undead Berg, you try to run across that bridge. And if you don't take the time and, and kill the skeleton guy um, to your, like, I think, there, there, I know there's one to the right. I don't remember if there's one on the left. But if you don't kill that guy on the right and you don't know exactly how to get across that bridge, you'll just get stunned and the guy on the bridge with the shield will kill you, right? And that's just, yeah. I mean, you can run past if you know how to do it, but um, by default, you want to take your time. This tree holds a strange power. What, what, what's this tweet? What have they been working on for years? I mean, the game is beautiful, right? Yeah, I mean, this game is so different from PoE 1. I am not remotely surprised that they are not merging them. There's no way you can merge these two games. They are very, very different games. Um, so this is the first main quest that you do. Uh, you, you get the, the hooded one unlocked. You talk to them. Uh, you have to go to this next area. This is the, over, the overworld map. It's very cool looking. My one complaint about it is that... So the quests are pretty clearly listed right here. Um, it's very high detail. It's really nice looking. It's a full screen thing instead of just like a, a side panel. And my one complaint about it is it's not very clear. Like these way, waypoint markers are very subtle. And so if you don't know the map very well, it's kind of tough to, kind of tough to read. Why is she not but yeah, the, the art's really nice. I mean, the game, it's really hard to tell from the video. Like you guys are watching it double compressed, right? This is recorded video and then you're watching it on Twitch. So it's, it's hard to tell. But this game is very beautiful. Um, like seeing the lighting effects at, at full fidelity is really, really good. So you can see, I just did um, three full zones. Three full zones. And I have 68 gold. And I can buy one medium flask. <laughs> um, it's, it's harsh. Like th these gold costs, 50, the same cost for one wisdom scroll. 775 gold? I didn't even make 770 gold in the entire playthrough in six hours. I played for six hours and I couldn't even buy this thing. Uh, like, the numbers are really, really like awful tuned. So, I, I just assume they put a zero at the end. They just need to remove that zero and it's fine. 
Um, I did end up buying a flask, and then this is the next zone. This is the Red Veil. So this is basically the Mudflats. Um, well, actually, I would say the last zone was kind of the Mudflats with those werewolves. They basically had the same effect as the Roas, where if you try to go a little bit too fast and you weren't careful, they would just swarm you and kill you. Um, but this, it, this has the exact same quest, basically, as the Roas. You have to go to three different of these pylons right here. Uh, and you do have to kill the monsters around them. You kill the monsters, you'll get a rune of power. You have to do three of them. And then on the last one, so you get these runes. On the last one, oh, this is where I grab Frostbolt. Frostbolt Other looks really cool. Normally be cast at your location. So they talk, they kind of talk about it. Um, Frostbolt looks so cool. And I just wish it were better tuned. <laughs> a lot of my complaints are actually just like how poorly tuned Sork was. Like all the other stuff can be adjusted, but it felt so bad seeing people have so much fun on Ranger and Warrior. And Sork was so poorly tuned. So this was actually the first real boss, but you're supposed to do it at like level level three, and I was level eight. So this this fight was way easier than it was for other people. I just one shot this boss. Um, another thing that I did is you can see I'm using this little chaos burst. I went for wand and shield. I found a really nice shield that gave me more damage. This is a devourer, as you can see. And you can see I'm chunking him for a lot of damage, but I'm also very, very overleveled right now. Um, for most people, this was a very hard fight. Um, so yeah, this is a devour fight. You can see this is the Frostbolt. It is very slow. It chills. It doesn't chill as much as I would like. Unfortunately, the chill effect was not particularly noticeable on boss fights. I, I really couldn't tell on some of them. It felt like the telegraphing was very similar. Um, but this new thing up here, this is the freeze effect. And so Freeze is very different in Path of Exile 2, where it's actually a meter that you build up, and then when you hit 100%, you will 100% freeze them for a couple seconds for like a DPS phase. Um, Cold Snap is actually reworked. So Cold Snap is actually a shatter that you cast on a frozen enemy to do uh, big damage, and it does an AoE explosion as well. So, Wazdy looks jank? No, Wazdy was incredible. No, as soon as you play Wazdy, you're like, oh, this is the right way to play. Um... Wazdy feels really, really good. Like, I, I actually am going to be missing Wazdy in Fury 1. <laughs> um, I could look at the passive tree, but yeah, it was it was not done. Passive tree was not complete, so I can't show it. So yeah, the boss fight, this is, the, the boss fight was really easy for me. Now, here's the thing. This felt awesome. If all of the boss fights felt like this in all of the encounters, I felt that strong. This feels like the right tuning. Unfortunately, we'll see very shortly that it didn't stay like this. This is just because I was overleveled. It got bad. So I made, I got another skill gem. I got a couple items that were pretty good. Um, chaos skill, I'm poor, unfortunately I have no chaos skill gems. This would have been really nice. Um, that was This was a thing that Jonathan said in the Q&A today is like they recognize that it's very reliant on getting good gear. It's entirely possible that if I got like plus one and plus one to cold gems that my build would have felt good, but I didn't. So my build did not. Um, unleashes a ring. So here I grab Ice Nova. So Ice Nova is by default the same as Ice Nova of Projection in PoE 1. So if you have a Frostbolt out, it will no matter what cast on that Frostbolt. And the cast time here of a full second to cast it is one of my biggest complaints here. Uh, um, it also does, does very low damage. It's only there for the 300% more freeze buildup. So all of the skills in PoE 2 are set up right now to be very combo heavy. Um, and this is one of the other things that I think this is going to be a very contentious design decision that I am not 100% sure. I don't know. This game is very combo heavy. So the setup that you're supposed to do here, Ice Nova does very little without, um, I, I would actually say it's unusable without Frostbolt. Um, Ice Nova has a very, it has a full one second cast time. I was getting stunned out of any time I got hit, so I had to be in a safe place. So the idea is you cast Frostbolt, and then and because of the cast time, I just can't self-cast it. You have to cast Frostbolt. Frostbolt's very slow. Then you cast Ice Nova. Ice Nova does ZDPS, but then if you freeze them, then you can cast Cold Snap, which will then explode a frozen enemy. So you have to use three different skills to combo, and, and you're using WASD, right? So you're controlling with WASD, and you're using three different skills, and then the, the, to unlock your damage. It's a lot of damage. Um, it's a lot of uh, combo. So like, you really have to think about this as like, if this is the design that they go with in the future. Um, oh, not to mention you want to cast Flame Ball as well. Just to get more flat damage. 
Um, this will be, this is a very divisive design. I found it very, if it worked and it were stronger, I would find it very fun. It was satisfying when you pulled off your combo, but it is like the people that just want to play one or even zero button builds and they refuse, like if you refuse to play detonate dead today and you would, you like not in a million years, would you play a two button build? This might be difficult for you. That's what I would say. Yeah, th this might be a little difficult for you. I did it. I guess I didn't show it yet. Let's see if I can. Yeah, yeah. Here's the next thing. So, to get your uh, your shards and your orbs, you actually have to. You don't go to the cell interface. Cell gives you gold. You go to the disenchant interface, and you can only sell them magic or rare items, which will give you transmute and alchemy shards, respectively. Which make it totally makes sense. Like that's actually a little bit more logical than PoE one. So a mat, you know, you get transmute for magic and, and alchemy for rare, and then you build those up. So this is the interface. You want to pick them all up, sell them for your shards, and then you'll get the, um, you get these. So yeah, you disenchant. I have, I found two chromes. Unfortunately, so I got a pure support and it said when I mouse over pure support, you can see it in my inventory there. When I mouse over it, it says it supports frostbolt. But then it w I, I even used a chrome on my frostbolt to get a green socket, and it wouldn't sock it in. I'm hoping it's a bug, but I couldn't use... I got Sorry, I got GMP, not Pierce. Um, or LMP. And I couldn't put LMP in my frostbolt, which felt really bad. Which is a ring of ice around your... Okay. So this is the next zone. You go to the graveyard. So this is when I saw this, right? When I saw the announcement today, I, I was like, holy shit, it's PoE2. They 100% just took this graveyard and said, all right, that's the Necropolis. <laughs> It's copy pasted from PoE2. So uh, this is the next zone, the Grim Tangle. It was very pretty, very nice graphics. This is where I zoomed in. Like the the, it's hard to tell here, but the cloth effects and the animations are really, really beautiful. Like the walking animation and everything with the WASD, it looks, it just, it looks modern. It looks like a really modern, nice looking game. So that's why I made sure to zoom in and kind of show off the what it looked like. So I'm, I'm hoping that they get the gameplay feeling, you know, for the sword feeling really, really good because the, uh, yeah, I mean, it looks, it looks awesome. The sounds really chunky, like, you know, like you, like with, with like really good headphones on and it allowed you like, doom, doom, like you feel the chunky, like the sound effects team killed it. Absolutely killed it with the sound effects team. And the music the whole time was giving like this real nice ambiance. Like I think in, in PoE 2, I could see myself like not turning the music off actually. Cause it, it, it sounded like just through the campaign, it just really set the tone and just gave it like this ambiance instead of more like, you know, attention grabbing music. But as you can see what I'm doing, like right there, I'm casting a Frostbolt and then I am casting Ice Nova and then I cast Cold Snap. Actually, I don't have Cold Snap yet. I'm just, they're just shattering naturally. So this is the next zone. You know, that's what I'm saying. I think a lot of people are going to be upset that the game is not for them. This is not targeted only for PoE 1 players. I'm sure if, if PoE 1 players want to play it, they're going to be happy. But I think they want to appeal to other people and just make their own game. And I, I respect that, you know. There's a lot of stuff here that I still, that's not clicking with me that I think needs work. But I see a ton of potential here. Like, even me playing the worst class. Um, these boss fights were super... We're in our mid-30s or older. Our fingers aren't super fast. I, got, I still got some pretty fast fingers. They're fast enough. Oh, I, I played a lot of Street Fighter with my friend, actually, the other day. Felt good. Um, this is Draven. So we had some Tyler 1 in the chat. This was the next, the next boss fight right here. Um... And yeah, this was uh, this was really uh, a, a good example of a nice little boss fight that I found I found pretty fun, and like I could build up the chill, I could do the combos. He was slow enough that it allowed me to play with all my skills. Um, however, look at my mana. Watch my mana. Notice that I did I got him down 10% life, and I fully ran out of my mana, and I had to use a mana flask. Luckily, one of my mana flasks right here did have the suffix for gain charges, so that helped a little bit. But you'll notice I'm using my generator right here. So my left click right now 
is effectively a generator skill. It's a zero mana, low damage skill, just like Diablo 4. <laughs> um, that's the thing that I hope that they revisit a little bit. Yeah, it, 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 felt, it, it felt like a generator, like, oh, I'm low on mana, I gotta use my little dinky thing. And you never want to do that, right? So we'll see what the tuning is later on. And I hope that uh, you know, I hope that's the thing that they rethink. Now, now, granted, if my main skills did really good damage, that would be fine. But my skills did so little damage versus my generator skill that I actually ended up just using, uh, you know, just using this more than even trying to set up my combo. So the main thing is during a boss fight, trying to set up your combo. Like all of my skills had a long cast time and a lot of wind up to set up the combo, and the damage wouldn't be good enough to be worth that time investment, right? So yeah, you can see the little stun meter. I'm gonna stun him in a second after a couple more hits. He gets staggered, and then you get a little DPS phase. So that's kind of a cool little thing. But yeah, like you saw the earlier boss fight, right? Where I did good damage and it felt good. Here, this is how bad my damage got. And this is... Um, and I had the best gear that I could get. I actually spent a good amount of time farming some of the zones, trying to get upgraded. So, yeah, beautiful game, lots of potential. Anyway, this is the rest of the boss fight. No, I only played Sork. I didn't have time to play the other classes, unfortunately. All right, so I killed him, got some item, got some items here. <coughs> Here's the rest of the graveyard. Um, after the graveyard, oh, I got an upgrade for my body armor. Cool. Yeah, oh, like, yeah, this is a good example. Of, like, the items, like, just like the regular gray robe right here. The cloth effects and everything, it just, in the animations, I just thought the game was gorgeous. Like, it's such a pleasure to look at. Can't show items? Yeah, you can show the items. There's nothing, there's nothing to look at. You're, you're worried that builds will be too forced? Yes, I'm a little worried that the builds might be a little too railroaded with the combos. I agree. Go back to what? What looked crazy? What, the items of the gear? Oh, the ones that dropped? Eh, there's just nothing there. Nothing to look at. Like, it looks and feels really cool. I'm Yeah, I'm just very afraid that things kind of get railroaded too much because the combos, like, almost force you to get into stuff. Did you get into any game dev discussion with them? Um, I had, so unfortunately, this was, I mean, if I'm gonna complain a little bit, uh, or if we're gonna complain a little bit more, we were all told that we're gonna get interviews with Jonathan. <laughs> um, and this could be miscommunication by the uh, the agent, like the, the hype agent guy that we talked to. So, you know, I don't wanna blame GGG for this, but he promised we'd all get GGG interviews and only like a few people did. And there was no way they could have like interviewed everyone. There was like 40 people there. Uh, like as soon as I saw 40 people, I was like, oh, a lot of people are not getting interviews. And uh, yeah, unfortunately I did not. I talked to Octavian a good amount. It was really awesome to meet Octavian. Like he walked up to me and he was like, oh man, it's good to meet you. I'm sorry I didn't get to talk to you at XLCon, um, which it was really nice to, to you know, make a connection with him. And we actually had, um, we actually like hung out in the in the downstairs for a little bit the next day, but I mean there, he couldn't really you know tell me that much stuff. Did I like the well to refill the potions? No. <laughs> no, Octavian was awesome. He was really cool. No, I think the well feels feels bad. The flame wall's bright. Yeah. Um. Also, yeah. Let me see if I can if I ever use the flame wall again. They added a really cool effect where when a projectile goes through the flame wall, you see the added damage. You see a little fire projectile on it. Now here's the next zone. This was, a, this was actually a really cool thing. This is a good example. So the, that green guy, this knight, this is a really good example of, like look at when I hit him with the shield with my frostbolt. You'll see a green projectile actually bounce off of him. And they see any projectile, it'll bounce off from the front. So you actually have to be smart about how you take this fight. So I figured out that I could just cast Flame Wall underneath his feet. So direct projectile damage to the front would actually reflect back to me. 
But if I hit him from the side, behind, or underneath, I could deal damage to him. Um, other thing that I did is I actually would throw the Frostbolt past him and then do the Ice Nova behind him to then freeze him and shatter him. Right? Like, that was kind of cool. Um, yeah, those were, those were really nice boots. So, like, a really cool way to, you know, kind of, um, you know, take on the fight. Like, yeah, you had to think about it. Yo, Vimation, five months. The, the game's still cooking. The game's still cooking, but yeah, it's definitely not going to be for everybody. For sure. Um, you know, if they stick with these game design decisions. Was he really that tall? Yes, Octavian was very tall. I mean, everyone's really tall to me. It's surprising that they mention the games in the same breath. I mean, it's technically the sequel, right? It's technically the sequel, and it's the same universe, same, you know, a lot of the same base classes, a lot of the same design, you know, high-level design language. But it's definitely, this is way more Dark Souls-y. Which PoE community member made me the most nervous? I mean, nobody. Nobody, because, uh... Actually, you know who would have made me the most nervous? Um, but he diffused it really, really quickly. I, I would have been nervous to meet Jung Ron at first. Because, like, I just... You know, I just don't know what he thinks. <laughs> I don't know what he thinks. Uh, he's very close to the best about things. But, like, he was very, very drunk, and he woke up to me, and he just hugged me. Um, could have been the alcohol talk talking, but, yeah, he hugged me, like, three times. So... Um, besides that, I had, I had already met, like, everyone else um, at x -Halcon. So, like, I, I wasn't really nervous about um, about anything. Did I see Elkaiser? Yeah, I shared an elev elevator with Elkaiser. <laughs> and we talked about our flights. We just had a little, like, oh, how was the flight? Am I all right? I'm fine. What's the white flask? Yeah, so this is another thing. Um, for, so you can see this this boss has uh, an energy shield. This encouraged me even more just to use my generator alone because uh, chaos damage bypasses energy shield. So I just, there was no reason for me to use any other skill in this fight besides uh, just breaking out of his bone prism. This was a cool fight. Um, but I get, I think the other thing that they could do is buff the the loot like the loot from bosses was the best loot that i got but it was still really bad i think more meaningful like clearly good loot dropping from the boss would have made like because this is a long fight right would made doing the fight much more worth it spirit flask no no so these flasks they removed um you know frost uh, you know chill and freeze removal stun removal bleed removal all of that is gone from your other flasks, from your life and mana flasks. These are specifically like an anti-bleed flask, anti-freeze flask, um, which uh, I don't love. <laughs> which I don't love, considering how, like, if you didn't need your life and mana flasks so badly, I wouldn't be against it. Right, like, the, I don't mind the gameplay being more intentional and, and choice-driven. Like, I think that's kind of cool. But, can you use orbs on the flasks? Yes, you can craft them. But, um, this is the next boss fight. You go immediately to the next boss fight. But, because your life and mana flasks, at least in Act 1, right? Like, everything can be different later. But in Act 1, your life and mana flasks are so meaningful that it felt really bad to give up a single slot. Uh, where, like, I actually should have just bought another life flask or mana flask. Uh, so yeah, this is the next, bo next boss fight. He's... We have three boss fights in a row here that are just like spectral green guys. This fight was, uh, for a Sork, was actually mechanically very easy. This guy felt like he had less life, so the um, the combo, and he was slow enough, the combo actually felt pretty good on him. The fifth flask is an anti freeze flask. Regular utility flasks in PoE 2, I think, are gone. I, I, I didn't see any. Yeah. Like, bu buff utility flasks. I didn't see any. Lightning bolt. Lightning bolt. So this is the boss fight. Not much more to watch. Um, I one-shot this guy. So all of, all of the graveyard bosses I one-shot. 
That's gonna change in a little bit. We got we got some fun. So this is the next area. So this was the worst area, in my opinion. This area sucked. <laughs> um uh, no, a lot of people had no, so a lot of people uh, apparently Warrior was was tough early on, but I heard that Warrior became very, very strong. I talked to Karn, who you know is obviously biased, but Karn said that Warrior felt really, really good. And I heard that from other people. So is mov is movement speed a rollable stat? Yeah, apparently you can't get movement speed on boots. I never got it. But yeah, um, people were saying that the, the shield, you can hold up a shield. There's an active shield skill now where you can hold it up and just become 100% immune to damage from the front. People were saying that felt really, really good. And shield charge was giving like really high stun chance. Um, people said it felt really good. Um, but yeah, this area, um, to me, this, this looks a lot like the Burning Village from Sekiro. So I thought that immediately as well. This area teaches you, if you didn't learn the lesson already, that you can't keep running forward to I was stuck in this zone for at least 45 minutes I would say it's a gigantic area and there's a boss fight at the end of it but I I wandered the entire area looking for the boss fight clearing the whole thing um gigantic area like I actually think bigger than any other this area alone I think it was possibly bigger than any other uh PoE 1 campaign zone and here's the thing, is like you're running out of flash charges. You can't not kill the monsters. You have to kill every single one. You have to do the full combo on every single pack of monsters. This zone was so big that um, it felt a little, it definitely felt a little tedious um, to, get, to get through it. Felt a little tedious to get through this zone. I mean, a lot tedious. Because um, you had to kill every single pack of monsters. I don't know if I kept any footage of me dying here. But I spent like 45 minutes in the zone until I finally found the boss fight. And here it is. Now, this is by far the best part of the entire experience. Uh, unfortunately, some of the other classes could kill him a lot easier. This fight is so fucking cool. Uh, it proves that they understand really good boss design and encounter design and look and feel and everything. If they can capture this more and they just get the balance into it. This is the thing. This boss fight is what has me excited for PoE 2. Um, so, yeah. This, just let's just, just watch this a little bit. Stop. Just wait. Surely, surely we can... You shouldn't have come back here. Great Wolf, take you, boss. So that's a pile of heads right there. <laughs> a pile of heads. So this is the execution. <laughs> I shall have my revenge. And this guy is fucking so And he, um, many of his moves will one shot. That swing, like, that has a full hitbox behind it. You have to, you can't get hit in the back. So you have to be very careful about how you fight him. Oh, yeah, yeah. So th this is the thing. Um, the, the flame wall right here. You can see this little flame coming off the back. Any projectile that goes through it gets a little flame. Did I see any sort of way to do creative builds? Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, he has this real big sun here. And then he has a, a leap slam off screen. That. So he drops a giant executioner's axe. And, uh. You'll see in a second. So he has an ad phase right here. Which would be cool if they gave you flash charges. But it just makes it harder. And. There's my first death. There's my first death on him. Enjoy. So like right there, I was I was locked into my 
flame wall animation before he even started the cast. <laughs> So here's the interesting thing. Is that I believe this is the fight where I kill him. The interesting thing is that the um, looks frustrating. I mean, if you if that's frustrating, then you like to me that's perfect. Um, that's what I want from a boss fight. Um, because eventually you learn the boss fight, and this is you know this is after less than half an hour, I would say. Yeah, I died six times, right? And every time you can't just ri you can't just uh, run the boss right. You can't just sit there and zerg him down. You have to learn the boss fight, and you die six times, and then you learn how to do the fight. And it's so satisfying to learn the fight. Um, and uh, like I got hit a couple times here, like a couple of the smaller hits. I actually, unfortunately, did have to learn. I did have to fight him multiple times because of some bugs. Um, on my last time that I fought him, oh, also this is Frost Bomb right here for a little bit more damage. On the last time that I fought him, I actually didn't get hit once. I did a full no, no hit run. Um, and that felt so satisfying after dying six times, and then I killed him without getting hit once. And that felt really, really cool. Like, the big thing is learning that, like, panic rolling is not a good idea. Like, that, um, that guillotine drop is, a re is really well designed because it teaches you that a roll actually doesn't make you faster. You're actually slower if you roll. You're fast at the first, you know, the first part of it, but then you're slow getting back up. So it's good for like a quick move, but if you're in the middle of it, you, you're actually faster just walking out than trying to roll and then walk out. And you, like the, that, this fight perfectly teaches you that game mechanic, and it's really cool, like actually learning and mastering like some of the game mechanics at, through a boss fight and teaching you kind of organically for that, right? Like, uh, that, that was really cool, and it felt really, really good. Yeah, I mean, I think through the axe, you're intended to get, you know, basically one shot by, you know, any slam attack in a boss fight. Yeah, so this was... I, I, th I found this a very, very cool boss fight. Like, I thought this was so awesome, so perfectly designed. Um, teaches you game mechanics, and, like, it's such... The introduction to him is so huge and badass, and you just feel awesome when you finally kill him. They said they want to make the game more accessible to new players. So, did you misinterpret? No. You're looking at it from the perspective of a PoE 1 player. So, it's very, very difficult for PoE 1 players to understand what makes PoE 1 inaccessible, right? Like, arguably, the, the, the number one thing that makes PoE 1, PoE 1 inaccessible is not the difficulty, it's the complexity. And PoE 2 is very streamlined in terms of complexity. Like, a, a lot of, uh, a good number, rather, of people that were not real PoE 1 players said that they thought the difficulty in PoE 2 was okay. They didn't find it a problem. Um, now, Sork, Sork is a little bit of a different story. Sork is just is undertuned. Like, you're watching undertuned gameplay, right? Um, but the... Uh, watch his death animation right there. Um, but in terms of the complexity, PoE 2 is very readable. Like, you only get three choices when you get a skill gem. Uh, there's a little tutorial that tells you how it works. Just WASD controls, and you're supposed to kill all the monsters. Unfortunately, this is where um, my run ends. <laughs> uh, due to time constraints and other reasons, I was not able to progress further than this. But no gold auto pickup? No gold auto pickups. I'm pretty sure you don't, you don't click on the gold. But yeah, um, like in this fight, you know what you got hit by. It's very obvious. And you, I learned the fight in less than half an hour. And now, you know, I can just do it. I could do that. Unless they change that fight. I can do that fight again in a year and I'll, you know, maybe I'll die once and then I'll just remember it. You saw me clicking the gold. You don't have to, you can walk over the gold. This was kind of annoying thing is you're trying to do the little quest here. And there's these guys that are off screen that are shooting arrows at you. 
That was a very, uh, very brutal. Clear. Your friends don't like PoE1 because it's hard? I mean, when people say hard, right? When people say hard, they might be thinking complexity. Because PoE1, yeah, that's the end for me. PoE1 is not a hard to play game if you know what you're doing, right? PoE1 is a hard game when you don't know what you're doing. But once you know what you're doing, right? Like look at any of like the high, you know, the high efficiency league starter builds. It's like look at Guardian right now. Like Guardian SRS through the campaign is a joke. As soon as you get your ascendancy, you literally don't think the entire time. You press, you press summon big yellow dude and he one shots everything. And you literally don't play the game anymore. And I think that's, that's just a knowledge thing. If you know the right node to take, you can make it a joke. But if you don't know the right node to take, right? I know they nerfed him, but it, he'll still be really good. Uh, I'm talking in general, right? That, that, that doesn't matter. I'm talking as a general concept. Like, Ignite, Frostblink Ignite Elementalist, right? As soon as you ascend, you are one-shotting everything. Like, one Frostblink kills all of the zone bosses. And that's just a knowledge thing. Whereas the game's actually really easy to play if you know the right strong build to make. But learning how to get there is the hard part. PoE 2, they want to have it a more logical... Like, it teaches itself, right? It teaches itself, and it's more logical to just figure out, more intuitive, to just play it and like, hey, I'm just playing a regular video game, and I understand what's going on. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think... I think there's probably a world where, like, build complexity and all that is toned down significantly, and uh, mechanical expression is, is going to be more highlighted. WASD is, is incredible, yes. WASD is truly as good. As they, um, as they said, it is, it's absolutely game changing and it's so game changing that I don't know how it could fit in PoE 1. Like a lot, I saw a lot of people yesterday talking like, like, oh yeah, they're removing left mouse button to put Wazi in PoE 1. And maybe they do, maybe they do. But, um, like the big thing you can see, I can walk as I'm casting, being able to walk and cast at the same time in PoE 1 ch would change a lot. That would change so much. And I'm not sure, um, I'm not sure that that's a, a thing that ever fits in the game. And in WASD without walking while attacking would feel bad. So, how's it feel using all the other skills? I mean, it's okay. I mean, it's the same as playing anything else, you know? Like playing a first-person shooter, you get your Q and your E and yeah, it's fine. The skills weren't annoying. The, the flasks were really annoying. Flasks sucked. Um... Can you hot swap to mouse click? I mean, probably. I couldn't. There was no options. I couldn't rebind anything, which is really annoying for me. But... Yeah, no, I thought WASD felt incredible. All the PoE 1 players want to see the end game. Uh, if I'm going to be perfectly honest, considering how little that I saw them have complete during this demo, I don't think that they know what their end game looks like either. Did you mess around with the weapon swap? I messed around with it at Exocon. There was no weapon swap um, in this in this demo, but they uh, I played it in PoE in the Exocon demo, and it was really annoying. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, the weapon swap in PoE, the demo at Exocon felt awful. There was no hideout here, no. It was like a it was like a full one or two seconds to do a weapon swap at the Exocon demo. Is LA that bad? Every streamer complains. Um, the traffic is, is obscene. So the thing is, all the streamers, they took the the ride from the airport to the hotel was awful. The traffic was awful. People complaining about stuff like smelling like piss and marijuana and whatever is like, have you ever been to a city? I don't know. I think a lot of people have never been to a city or outside. Um, like we were in a, not the nicest part of LA, but we weren't in a horrible part of LA. And the, the, unfortunately, like the hotel was in the middle of a, um, and a very touristy area. So like the food, like we weren't in a good food area or anything like that. The hotel food was pretty good. The hotel was really nice. It was the W hotel in Hollywood. And the, the staff there were, was exceptionally nice. Possibly the nicest hotel staff I've ever interacted with. Like, five out of five for that hotel. Like, they were so nice. I, I was blown away. Um, and the food was, was totally fine. But you can smell piss in the city, like, on the road. 
Yeah, I mean, homeless people just piss on the piss on the sidewalk everywhere. Have you have you never been to a city? <laughs> I mean, Taipei was Taipei was the same. New York is way worse. New York is way worse than LA. Like all of New York just smells like piss. The whole city smells like piss. Like, have, like, has no one ever been to a city before? LA was not that bad. I barely smelled any piss in LA. Sorry, yeah, you can't just say not in Canada. I have been to Montreal and that place smells like piss.